guys, so today I wanted to make a special video because it is the 25th of April in Portugal and this is the day that we celebrate the end of the dictatorship of Salazar. For those who don't know, uh, in Portugal for the, from the 1930s, I think, 20s, something, until 1974, 5, okay, 74, I think, 74, we had a dictatorship, and um, yes, it did keep us from the war, but it had very nefarious consequences in our country, there were lots of persecutions, there wasn't any freedom, and uh, there were other unforeseen consequences that uh, people may not be so uh, so aware of. So we all know that people were persecuted for differing political ideas. That uh, my grandfather, he was uh, he drove uh, he. He was a, um, what do you call, the train, um, those that drive trains. And he, he, he brought mail from ex expats and everyone that was fighting the regime. So, it was a very hard time. But now I am, uh, I want to talk about um, a thing that is not usually mention in the context of um, the dictatorship because it's such a small minority uh, or rather um, it's such a, an invisible part of the population that uh, it's barely in any history books what happened to the Jewish community during the what you call the new state Stad Nouv, that was the dictatorship by Salazar and later his um, uh, you know followers um, successor. So um, there are various reasons why the dictatorship was bad. Um, in one side, it had a neutral position in the war, and uh, because of that, they didn't um, have, um, let's say, a, co a coherent view on accepting Jewish refugees from um, Europe, especially. Portuguese descendants that still had Portuguese names, even though they barely spoke any Portuguese at all or didn't even speak Portuguese because, of course, they mixed in with Ashkenazi Jews. They speak uh, Dutch and uh, they didn't speak Portuguese, but uh, most escaped and some Ashkenazi Jews as well to Portugal. Now, uh, because there was not a specific policy about Jews in Portugal, some were welcome and had uh, support from the Portuguese government and authorities, while others were unfairly persecuted, and there was a lot of injustice then. Even the Portuguese consul, Aristides Souza Minj, that saved thousands of Jews, was uh, reprimanded and uh, um, had serious consequences because he aided Jews in Germany, in Germany, not Germany, <laughs> you know what I mean, uh, escape uh, the German uh, army, escape the Nazi persecution uh, to Portugal, and he gave them thousands and thousands of uh, visas to Portugal. So what happened after that is that he was, of course, uh, faced uh, some trial and uh, was condemned for what he did. Now, the thing is, the government didn't not have uh, anti-Semitic position 
not because they were pro-Jewish, but because they wanted to be neutral in the war. In other things, they have shown quite a lot of anti-Semitism. Uh, for instance, they would be accused of being gays and having perverted uh, costumes uh, so as uh, to hinder their uh, expression of their religion, even though overtly the, the government wouldn't take anti-Semitic uh, you know, positions and wouldn't condemn people for Judaism per se, they would accuse them of other things to, um, yes, it isn't anti-Semitic, but um, they would find other things to blame the Jews for, so as to not be accusing them of being Jewish. So they were persecuted for being Jewish under a false pretense of something else, like Capitan Bacht, which was a very prominent Jew, he was uh, very respected, um, he was a captain, and uh, he started um, the Mekorheim uh, synagogue in Porto, and uh, he uh, had a project to gather um, the, um, you know, Bneansi, uh, the Merenj, uh, and uh, bring them back to Judaism officially. So he wanted to make the, um, let's say the lost Jews officially Jewish again. So what the government did uh, was that uh, they accused him of homosexuality and uh, he had to face a lot of repercussions. Um, oh, I have to explain one thing. Uh, Marange is actually a Spanish name, but uh, it's also used in Portugal, Portugal, <laughs> and uh, it is used because um, uh, Jews did not like to eat, uh, did not eat pork, and so as a kind of a pe pesky insult, uh, the locals would call them Marange because they were unwilling to convert to Christianity. They were forced convert. Uh, they were called Marange, um, and uh, and uh, there's actually um, uh, another explanation in Portugal uh, because you have the, the explanation from Spain that uh, means uh, that says that it comes for the from the fact that they didn't eat pork, but in Portuguese we have. Uh, an, an expression which is mahar, this is a verb, and to a person that is stubborn, we call them maham. Uh, basically, you know, it's like when the bulls hit, uh, you know, they, they, you know, it's hard to explain, it's a colloquial expression. Uh, it's very, very idiomatic. So when you have, um, um, let's say when you have, uh, you know, bulls, sheep, and they, they, the thing that they do when they fight each other, you know, with their heads, I don't remember in English, but yeah, that's what mahar means. And we use mahar as a synonym for being stubborn or even study, basically something that is intense. So... Other theories say that the term merenj comes from uh, this expression, which means to be stubborn. So we don't know which is actually the right etymology for the word, which, whether it is the Spanish etymology that means pork. Uh, well, actually, we also call pigs, female pigs here, mahan, but we don't call... Uh, male pigs that hmm weird just realized that so yeah we do it it's either because of the Portuguese etymology or the Spanish uh, etymology 
Although marranjo may be actually of Spanish origin because in Portuguese it would be marrões. Anyway, so this man, uh, Capitão Barros Bast, was trying to reunite the Jewish community uh, and he made the city of Ab of Porto and he tried to get her and bring back Judaism. So he was convicted for homosexuality all sorts of false accusations and he i think he was uh, dispensed of his uh, position at the army um so you know this was a huge setback in restoring the jewish community in portugal and uh <laughs> the jewish community in portugal only recovered and was only free to fully embrace Judaism after the dictatorship ended. So in terms of Jewish uh, freedom, in terms of going back to Judaism, this is actually something that needs to be celebrated. And it's a thing that isn't, you know, you don't learn this in school. It's something that you have to be either too interested in the world war in that period of time or be Jewish to know that. Uh, another thing uh, is, uh, and I'm, I'm using the Barjbash example, but he is one in hundreds of Jews that were persecuted under false pretenses just because they were Jews. Of course, uh, because the Portuguese government prides itself on being neutral and didn't want anything that would associate them with the Nazi German uh, and they even reprimanded the Nazi German um, um, regime. So they were anti-Semitic and uh, I think the I think I, don't, I think that since the Inquisition, the anti-Semitism hadn't been so rampant. But because they wanted a positive image and wanted to dissociate themselves from Germany, they always used secondary accusations to uh, attack Jews and. You know, persecute Jews, and uh, it, it is really confusing. I think the most, the, the those that suffered the most was were those that were trying to reunite the Jewish communities and were keeping them strong. So that's the thing to have in mind. The other thing, and which is one of the most important factors, why I think that Jews around the world should celebrate Portuguese, especially Sephardic Jews, uh, should celebrate Portuguese in the, it's not in Pensei, you know, the Day of Freedom, as we call it, Dia da Liberdade, um, or, uh, you know, uh, this uh, day should be celebrated by Jews worldwide because, uh, it is the day that um, Jews became free again in Portugal. And uh, not only that, uh, we have to know that um, before the dictatorship, there was a lot of Christian pressure on Jews, but um, it was pretty much... Uh, you know, you could be Jewish and uh, not be forced to be Christian Catholic and you could still hold on to your habits. <laughs> During the dictatorship, it became mandatory in all schools for uh, Portuguese to have Catholic education and they would have to pray every single day, every morning in every class and they had religious education. And this happened for years, almost, you know, 
over half a century of uh, pure Catholic indoctrination in schools. And uh, since uh, education became also mandatory, um, at least until fourth grade, kids were forced to become Catholics whether they wanted it or not. So a lot of B'nai Anasim, or the so-called Maranj, were forced into Catholicism and in two to three generations a lot of Jewish heritage was lost in Portugal due to the policies of the Stad Nov that forced Christianity on everyone in the population. So the dictatorship in Portugal was very detrimental to Jews on various fronts. Jews were persecuted even though they weren't uh, openly accused of Judaism like during Inquisition, they were accused of homosexuality, they were accused of disrupting, and other secondary charges to mask the anti-Semitism of the government. So a lot of the charges that you can find in documents, this, this is something that is hidden. You have a famous case, uh, uh, and uh, this uh, Capitan Barjbash really sheds a light on what was happening to Jews all over Portugal. And uh, there was, uh, even though there wasn't anti Jewish legislation, in uh, principle, it was there was a shadow government policy to eradicate Judaism in Portugal. They were forcing children in schools to learn Christian Catholicism. They were forcing them to pray every day. They were forcing them to worship the state and uh, the Kaiser. Uh, the I can't call him literally, uh, you know, he had very, very, very ambitious uh, pretenses, and uh, so they were forced into Catholicism again. They were being persecuted under other pretexts, but we all know that it was because they were Jewish, just like Capitan Barjbash, and they had, of course, again, everyone has some fo form of forbidden assembly because uh, they were afraid of conspiration but uh, I can see that especially Jews had a special hard time during the dictatorship so in all that we have all this uh, master plan to eradicate Judaism in Portugal and again it is under a shadow government policy None of this is on the record. It's all off records. However, these policies do exist. And yes, we can't forget the fact that Portugal was crucial in saving lots of Jews. But we can't forget that, especially in the north, lots of Portuguese have a severe, severe case of anti-Semitism. And while some Portuguese and some Portuguese authorities did indeed contribute to save uh, thousands and thousands of Jews, even the Rebbe himself, we can't uh, turn a blind eye to the rampant anti-Semitism that Christianity caused here. Um, and to this day, to this day, there is a rampant anti-Semitism in Portugal. And there is a huge damage caused by the forced Christian indoctrination in the new state, Stad Nov, during the dictatorship that meant that thousands of Jews lost connection to their Judaism. Like, uh, it started affecting the generation of my grandmother and my mother. And uh, you see, there are still some traits in my family of Judaism. But... Uh, Almost everything was erased due to the dictatorship.
there are other families that may have a worst case because the dictatorship was able to not only erase all traces of Judaism, but create uh, anti-Semitic ideology in them. Now, my grandmother is not anti-Semitic, but my mother is. So you can see how, but my mother studied in uh, the most, um, let's say, the most fascist years of the dictatorship which was the the last in the last decade of the dictatorship so she got it harder she got it a really huge brainwashing also my grandmother wasn't much of her church goers and uh, my mom started going to church with a neighbor and my mom complains that my grandmother never took her, her to church so a great part of my mom's religion is influenced by uh, her neighbor our neighbor but still, you can see how school, how forced Catholic doctrine in school damaged the Portuguese Jewish heritage that we still had. And now there's very little of it. And it's being threatened by secularism and uh, reform Judaism and all this progressivism. But still, uh, we need to celebrate the, the, the end of the dictatorship because after the dictatorship ended, Bach uh, Tsush's legacy could be carried on and uh, the community, the Jewish community could be reassembled and a lot of Jews could go back to Judaism and there is a revival of Judaism in Portugal. However, it is tragic that so many Jewish descendants lost their heritage, their, you know, they lost their connection to God because of forced Catholic indoctrination and persecutions. This is an unseen side of the Stad Nov, and I think we shouldn't forget that there was anti-Semitism in Portugal during the, the dictatorship. And because of this dictatorship, lots of Portuguese lost their Jewish roots. Also, during that, um, during the dictatorship, uh, they fostered a hoax of, of Fatima apparitions of the Virgin Mary that would be pretty much the final blow to Judaism in Portugal, especially in the center region of the country, because uh, it means that the Jews here um, were exposed to so, so much propaganda. And uh, like everyone knows someone who claims to have been there. And uh, these people, of course, um, in my time, my grandmother tells me how, uh, you know, someone went to her mother and told her, oh, you know, the Virgin Mary appeared uh, in such and such place. And, uh, you know, so, and uh, to my other grandmother too, and one of my great grandmothers was actually in Fatima, in one of the hoaxes. Um, so, yes, they, they concocted an hoax that ended up making sure that lots of Jewish families lots lost their uh, Jewish roots because, of course, if everyone in Portugal says that something happened and it is proven that it is a fact, this was supported by the government. This was completely, again, and it was deeply taught in schools. And because of nationalism and all this, all this, these lies and propaganda really seriously damaged the Jewish uh, heritage that Portuguese may have. So that's it for today. I just wanted to say this because it is important. 
So Judaism was attacked on three fronts. First, they made an oak to perpetuate the religious, uh, the Catholic Church and the religious myth of the Virgin Mary. They forced indoctrinated children in schools and they persecuted every Jew that tried to protect Jewish interests, interests and gather the Mahansh, the, the, the Sephardic Bnei Anisim, to make sure they came back to Judaism. So these were persecuted and the communities were persecuted. A lot of Jews were persecuted under false pretenses. So hidden in criminal records all over our country from that period, we have thousands of Jews and Bnei Anasim that faced unfair charges of some crimes, homosexuality and other things, to control Judaism. So yes, Eshtabanov was anti-Semitic and uh, regardless of those that helped rescue Jews from World War II, we cannot ignore the damage that the dictatorship did to the Portuguese Jewish community. And we can't ignore that all the non-anti-Semitism myth was caused not because Portuguese didn't have an anti-Semitic regime, but because they praised themselves on neutrality. So they wanted to be neutral. They didn't want to show any views that would connect them to Nazi Germany because they wanted international, oh, this is getting loose, uh, international approval. So because of that, uh, like they didn't want to disavow Nazi Germany but they didn't want to be connected to it. So they took an, ambigu an, an ambiguous stance on Judaism and did persecute Jews under false pretenses. One of the best example, and you should re research it, is Capitan Barge Barge, which was a very, I think it was condecorated, it was a very good captain in the military. And he had his career ruined just for the fact that he was trying to bring Jews back to Judaism. This is one of the biggest proofs that um, the Stadunov was anti-Semitic and was persecuting Jews. So I think a lot more investigation needs to be done uh, to expose the extent of the Stadtnov's harm to Jews. Um, this is why Vincent de Ville should be, 25th of April, should be celebrated by Jews worldwide, especially Sephardic Jews. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Good afternoon and see you in the next video.